could only see you all in one place. Thank you all. All right. Well, thank you, Jim. And there, there are a number of questions in the chat box that you can begin looking at. Uh, we're going to move on to Dale's presentation and try and answer some of those questions after uh, Dale speaks. And with that, if Dale is ready, I'm going to turn it over to Dale Dewing. He's Nutrient Management Team Leader with Cornell in Delaware County. Dale. Well, welcome. And uh, greetings from uh, the Catskill region of upstate New York. Um, we're having a great spring here. Um, you can see from the picture that um, this is a fairly typical farm scene from our area. We have mostly dominated by small dairy farms and narrow valleys and steep hillsides. Um, and um, this map gives you a good idea of where we're located in New York. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, basically our situation is in the early 1800s, um, New York City began developing their water supply north of the city and east of Hudson um, area. And then um, by the early 1900s, they needed more water and started expanding their system into the Catskill, Delaware watershed region. And uh, the most recent of those reservoirs was um, completed finally in the 1950s. Um, the whole system consists of 19 reservoirs supplying drinking water to 9 million people in, in and around New York City. And they use about uh, 1.3 billion gallons of water a day. Um, our project um, is in the Catskill, Delaware region of, of the water system. Uh, we have about 250 farms that are participating with us um, in four agencies, the Cornell Cooperative Extension, uh, NRCS, and the Soil and Water Conservation Districts, um, as you would experience in every other county in, in the country, um, and also the Watershed Agricultural Council, which I'll uh, explain more about in, in a little bit, um, all partnering with the New York City Department of, Department of Environmental Protection um, and um, the city funds uh, this project through um, um, the rate payers for the water system in New York City um, and protecting water quality in their, in their reservoirs. Our history begins um, in the early 1900s, or 1990s, excuse me, um, when federal regulations required that surface water supplies uh, should be filtered. Now for um, New York City to build a filtration plant it was estimated it would cost them about five billion dollars to construct and hundreds of million dollars a year uh, to operate. Um, the pollutants that are most uh, important in the drinking water system are pathogens like cryptosporidium um, and uh, phosphorus uh, related to eutrophication and uh, organic matter in the water which um, leads to chlorination, disinfection byproducts uh, which are regulated in the water system. So um, uh, phosphorus and pathogens are our main concerns. And through a long process um, to avoid filtration, um, the, the Watershed Ag Program um, came into existence. It was one of several um, uh, responses and requirements of the city's filtration avoidance determination. Um, and um, two important principles of our watershed ag program is that it's a voluntary program for the farmers in the watershed and that all the practices um, that are required in a whole farm plan are 100 percent cost shared or um, the, the cost of planning and development is borne by the city. Um, the Watershed Ag Council is 
the um, entity that has a relationship with the city, um, and it is governed by a board of directors of um, primarily farmers and agribusinessmen from the watershed area. And their mission is to support the economic viability of agriculture and forestry while protecting water quality and promoting land conservation. Um, you can see that what we're doing here is not a simple transaction. Um, it's really much better understood in the idea of a partnership. And uh, partnerships require a lot of trust and they require accountability. And we'll talk a lot more about these principles, but I think they're the most important part of, of what's happening here in our watershed. So the Watershed Ag Program, um, or the Watershed Ag Agricultural Council, has four main areas of programming in agriculture, forestry. We have a fairly extensive uh, program for purchasing conservation easements from farms. Um, as well as other economic initiatives. I'll be talking primarily about our agriculture program. Uh, you can see the water, our web address there. You can check that website out um, for further information about the other programs. So our watershed ag program is, is built on the concept of a whole farm plan. Um, Whole Farm Plan is basically uh, a CNMP, a con um, Comprehensive Nutrient Management Plan, similar to what's required in the, the CAFO programs. Um, and um, we have program staff planners um, who work for um, Cornell Cooperative Extension and the uh, NRCS, and those Planners meet with the farm and develop with the farm as a as a planning partner the um, the CNMP for that farm. Any practices that are identified as needed in that CNMP process um, are funded um, by New York City. Um, there's an extensive annual review process that we do with all farms. Uh, this is not just a one-time plan and done, but these farms are updated as needed. Um, operation and maintenance of all the practices is reviewed regularly with the farms. Um, and as the farms grow, change, um, change enterprises, uh, we have uh, the response to go back and, and revise their plans update the plans and keep them current with what's going on on the farm. Um, all the BMPs that are identified again are funded by New York City and these BMPs are designed based on the NRCS's standards and specifications um, and um, the farm uh, participates in all the, the planning and design they approve all the designs, and um, all the practices are constructed by local contractors. All these things um, are important in maintaining the partnership relationships um, that we have um, with the farms here. So as we are now in our second decade of implementing our program, there's a couple of chain challenges that we see that are relevant to our discussion today. And the first is continuing the high level of stewardship for the long term. Um, after working with a farm for 10 years or so, um, it's not always easy to have the same um, focus or enthusiasm for the practices as uh, when they were first installed. Um, and um, the second challenge is related to the first, that our cooperative conservation is only as strong as the weakest link in the chain of partnerships. Um, we need all of our partners um, actively engaged 
and especially those farmers actively engaged um, to continue to to have the water quality benefits that we're looking for. So to illustrate some of the ways that we've addressed these challenges, I want to look at some of our nutrient management planning efforts and how we've um, uh, been responding to these challenges. So our staff does a nutrient man develop the nutrient management plans for each of these farms. Um, we update the plan every three years with new soil samples and new um, um, information from the farm. We do the plan uh, based on the nitrogen and phosphorus indexes as uh, required by um, NRCS standards. Um, but a um, nutrient management plan that's sitting on a farmer's shelf um, doesn't protect water quality. A plan that's implemented protects water quality. But uh, following a nutrient management plan um, is expensive. It's inconvenient and requires additional management. Often we're asking farms, uh, even small farms of 40 cows, 50 cows, to transport more manure more than two or three miles. Um, a lot of diesel fuel. Um, it's a lot of time. It's a lot of um, additional direction of staff, um, making sure that people go to the right place with manure. And the aspects of a nutrient management plan that are the most costly, um, the most in inconvenient, the most expensive, are the ones that are the most important for protecting water quality. So how are we going to get um, those plans followed closely? So our response to help ensure this is um, what we call a nutrient management credit program where farmers who closely follow their nutrient management plan can receive a financial incentive. We ask the farms who participate in this program to submit their manure application records annually. Um, our staff compares them, their records, to their nutrient management plan. And um, a peer review committee comprised partly of uh, Watershed Ag Council members and other farmers uh, in the watershed, review those records and certify their compliance. So um, the farms have to document how closely they followed their plan. And um, the incentive is a reimbursement for expenses rather than a direct payment. Um, and the annual rate is $10 per acre and $4 an animal unit per farm. And um, they can then up to the amount that they have earned in incentive, uh, we will reimburse, reimburse them for eligible expenses like purchase, lease, and repair of their manure handling equipment, pay for custom handling and spreading of manure, um, the establishment of cover crops, um, a few other things. But those are the main things where um, we're able to reimburse um, farms. They can uh, bank these credits over a number of years to save up for a large purchase. Um, it's been relatively um, easy for farms to get um, their uh, credits reimbursed. And um, we have found that um, we have very little problem with farms not closely following their plans. So, Partnership is the key to our program, as I see it. And partnerships have to happen on many levels. Um, there's the partnerships, obviously, between New York City and the upstate community here uh, in the watershed. Um, but partnerships with our agencies and the farmers, um, the partnerships between multiple agencies are never as simple as they should be. Um, you start adding in. Um, the local contractors who need to imp we need to implement the program and to build BMPs. And there's another level of partnership. Uh, local governments are involved. Um, so many levels of partnership that we have to maintain to be effective. And as I see it, partnership is built on trust. And trust is probably the most 
uh, valued commodity that we have. Um, trust is not easily gained, nor is it easily maintained. Um, and with anything, actions speak louder than words. Um, and trust is something we found that you can't purchase, that you have to earn. And so having a program that's direct, directed by a local council of farmers helps us build trust. Delivering that program through local agencies that the farmers have gained trust in over the years is important. Things like our peer review committee give farmers confidence that they can um, disclose what they're doing on their farm and um, if they're not going to be, um, be harmed by releasing that information. But balancing that trust has got to be accountability. Um, you have to be effective if we're going to maintain these partnerships. If we're going to please our partner that needs water quality benefits, we need to be effective. Um, farmers as well need to have assurance that only good stewardship is rewarded, that um, someone isn't getting a, a payment for doing nothing when they're, when they're doing what they're supposed to do. Um, Operation and maintenance of practices is very important in accountability, and we review those annually. Um, we ask for our application records um, to try and build that accountability. So how have we done? Well, on the farm scale, the research here has shown that we've had a 43% reduction in total dissolved phosphorus and a 29% reduction in particulate phosphorus measured in the stream uh, coming from farms. And then on a, a watershed scale, um, in our most critical reservoir, we've seen a 60% decrease in to the total dissolved phosphorus loading from all sources. And 45% decrease is due to um, agricultural BMPs. So again, the key factors I see in, in what we're doing are um, partnership. Partnership is absolutely required, and partnership is not a transaction. It's, it's a relationship. And those relationships need to be able to balance trust and accountability um, to achieve uh, the benefits that we've been able to, to achieve. So well, that's what I have to say. Thanks for listening. All right. Well, thank you very much, Dale. When we were trying to pull out a couple examples of uh, market-based programs, uh, these were two that were highlighted. But I would like to mention that there are several others. Uh, in particular, I think in the chat box you can see uh, some that the ARS is, is working on in terms of this nutrient trading tool, uh, a nitrogen trading tool. I'd also like to highlight uh, a Pennsylvania water quality trading program. And uh, the supporting resources for, these, for this webcast, which is online, have links to uh, both of those, those other programs that are out there to help you out. And like I said, there's many others that are highlighted on the environmental planning page on our website. That uh, y'all can see the polling pods that are up there. I, I would encourage you to answer.